The Way is an epic journey through time. From the dawn of creation to the building of a nation and the conquest of the promised land to the birth of the baby who would save the world from sin. Who was the way? Who was this light that dawned in the darkness? His name was Jesus, Yeshua, the long-awaited Messiah. And Kathy Lee, I want to start uh, by telling you uh, what an honor it is to, to chat with you today. Yeah, I'm happy we're together today. I want to start with letting you in on something for me personally. When you uh, shared the, it was really his testimony of when uh, your husband passed. And when I watched that, um, for someone who had dreams of being on the Today Show myself, uh, you know, at the beginning of her career, and to watch you so gracefully and humbly share the gospel on that platform like you did and how um, you shared his story and your story as well. I mean, was really almost shocking for me as a fellow journalist to see that on air. And it just made such a huge impact on me in my life. And I know so many others as well. So I first want to start off and saying thank you for being so bold about your faith. And, and for really, you know, using your platform, I think it, I think it spoke to a lot of people. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've heard, uh, it's, it's rare that a day goes by that I don't hear from somebody what that meant to them or what it meant when I shared it with, when Billy Graham passed, who was a dear friend and I got on the Megan Kelly show. And, you know, every time, um, I, the, I guess the one thing I look back on this 55 years in this business that I've done and early, early on, I knew exactly where I was supposed to go. I knew the world I was supposed to, to go into. And, and the Lord told me early on, do not separate the secular from the spiritual. This is my world. You just be me in human form in whatever world I send you into. You yeah. represent me. And, uh, so I always felt that that wherever he sent me was my mission field. And it, and uh, I got criticized so much for it back years and years ago. And I was, you know, on a sec, I was on a uh, soap opera and then I was on a game show and then I was on a, 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 a hee haw honeys. And I mean, I, I was in commercials. I was all over the place, but what people couldn't see is that that's where God had called me. I can't tell you the amount of people that, that came to know Yeshua Jesus because I was on a set with them somewhere and they couldn't get away from me. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it just, that was my ministry and it continues to be. So um, I'm, I'm excited for you that the Lord has moved you into a, uh, another area, but it's all God's world, Carly, all of it. And he's, and, and, you know, the people who said you should, if you're going to be a missionary, you better go to, you know, go to China or go to more millions of people have heard the gospel because I was on, secular tv because i blew in there every chance i got not because i was trying to preach at people but because i was i was given an, an opportunity to share and I, and I could not live with myself if i didn't always take the opportunity because that's i knew that's why god had chosen me to go there yeah. so how could you be so bold for jesus i said that's that's why he put me there because he made me bold <laughs> <laughs> hello amen <laughs> Well, and let's talk about media and what a powerful tool it is. And this is why I love uh, this film and this project that you're doing with The Way. As far as, um, you know, the Bible is the Bible. It doesn't get any better than written word, I think, obviously, uh, that scripture and the Bible gives us. But if we can continue to give resources, I think, to bring the Bible to life, mm -hmm. What what better way could we do that? And what more powerful way through media? Talk about that and the importance of bringing the Bible to life and certainly with what you're doing uh, with this latest film. Well, um, I came to know uh, Yeshua, Jesus, uh, when I was 12 years old, sitting in a movie theater. Uh, Billy Graham's organization had made their first film, a theatrical film called The Restless Ones. And I was uh, just a 12 year old, 13, very young, and it was uh, it changed my life. And at the end, at the end there was a, a, a an altar call, basically. If you want to know uh, 
uh, Jesus, this this person that this young heroine in the movie had come to, she made a choice between the world, going the world's way or following Jesus. And I was sitting there and I felt like, uh, and I had a Jewish daddy and a, and a, and a, uh, a, a Gentile mom, grew up in that, in that kind of a household. Um, but none of us were walking uh, with, with uh, God. We just believed in him. And this is the first time I felt like there's something else here. And I felt the, the the voice of Jesus say very clearly to me, Kathy, I love you. And if you'll trust me, I'll make something beautiful out of your life. And I got up as fast as I could and ran down to, to give my life to Yeshua. It's the greatest decision I ever, ever made. Um, but I didn't know the scriptures. I knew stories from the scriptures. But I got kicked out of Sunday school when I was about that age because uh, I actually had the audacity to say to my teacher when she was teaching something, I don't believe that teacher. I'm sorry. It was when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And I said, my Jesus wouldn't do that. My Jesus wouldn't curse something he created and he loves. I don't think that's what it means. And she goes, she asked my parents to have me not return to Sunday school. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I was kicked out of the brown questions, school. though, right? You're meant to be curious. Well, God loves our questions. Turns out later that the, the sycamore fig trees really, in Jesus' day, represented the Pharisees and the Sadducees. <laughs> Jesus was cursing them when he cursed that tree. <laughs> Not because it was a tree with no fruit on it. They had no fruit on them. They weren't feeding God's children, the flock, the sheep. And that's what that's what you learn when you study these kinds of books that I write with my with my I'm not the, the biblical scholar. Believe me, I I study with them, though, and I write books with them. This is the second book that I've written with uh, Rabbi Jason Sobel, who I wrote The Rock, the Road and the Rabbi with huge, huge bestseller. And thank God for that, because that money that from the bestselling book, Rock, Road and Rabbi made uh, the, the, the God who sees it possible. I put all of the profits from that into what I call my kingdom account. And um, and I use that to take Nicole C. Mullen to, to New York, to um, Israel and shoot that and shoot that magnificent woman with her, with those incredible pipes of hers. And, and this, everything came to life. And it was the fir first time I'd ever directed. And I said, Lord, I want to take the rest of these stories in your scriptures and make the, the Bible which a lot of people think is the most overrated p garbage. They'd never read the Bible. Why would I want to read this dusty old book that never was alive? Certainly ain't alive today. They could not be more wrong. They could, and yet I understand why they feel that way. There are so many horrendous translations of the Bible mm. and they've set people on down rabbit holes and they're setting people down bad paths and, and it's called they've caused wars they've they've called they, they've caused crusades they've it's caused marriages to break up and friendships to end and all that because satan has used that division and that um and that um literally um ignorance about what the scriptures really say to tear us apart the thief comes to steal kill and destroy and he's the father of lies yeah. Well, sadly, if we had, if we're not reading a, a scripture that is truly a translation from the Hebrew in the original uh, Hebrew and the original Greek in the new, in the new, I don't even like to break the Bible up to, to the Testaments. It's one story, everybody. It's one magnificent love story of God who created everything um, uh, that we see, that we smell, that we touch, that we taste. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. And then he created all of his children, all of humankind, not to, to lord over us in the sense that a lot of people think of in a religious way, but to have relationship with him. I am not a religious person. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I love relationship with the living God. It's the, it's the best. There's nothing like that in the world that I've ever experienced. And I know I get a little crazy all about it, but it's because I want people who are lost, people that religion has let down, people that are brokenhearted because of the, the scandals in the church, people who've they're been betrayed by people who call themselves Christians. You know, it's uh, we're, we're all human and we all fall short of the glory of God. But if we are reading the scripture in its original form, we at least will get a picture of what God originally intended for us. Well, that's and what I was going to ask. How you, for people that have tried, that have that are searching, 
they've tried, you know, the Bible or they, what they thought was, and it still hasn't made a difference for them yet. What is, you know, when you're waiting on God to move and to speak to you and it hasn't happened yet, what is your, what's your take? What's your advice? First of all, you, you just pray and say, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling. You know it. If you are real, then you already know I've got a problem with this and I have a problem with you. He can handle that. So, so if you're real, prove it. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have have come to know God in a, in a in a in a in a very relevant way by saying that prayer. They're not trying to be flippant; they're just being honest. And then reveal. And then, if there's something you want to do just today, just go right now on YouTube and put in um, download the God who sees, and that will be the that will give you an, an idea of what the my movie the way is. It's it's one of the oratorios out of uh, out of it featuring Nicole C. Mullen, and it uh, has touched millions of people who, uh, I mean, even if you go to some of the comments, even today, you'll find a few that will say, and this is three and a half years later, uh, they'll say, uh, I was going to kill myself today, and I stumbled on this video. It's a, it's a short film. It's 11 and a half minutes long. So now I know, though, I'm like Hagar, who was 4,000 years ago. I know now God sees me. I know he loves me. And I and and I have hope for the first time, literally. Or I, my mother, I, I would would never come to Christ. Didn't want to. Didn't believe it. And and she's been in hospice. And I took it and I played it for her. And she came out of whatever, and 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 came to know Christ. There's so many stories like that, because it's truth. It's just truth. The first time God was given a name in the Bible, it was it was by Hagar. The God who sees because she found a well that, that saved her and, and Ishmael, her son's life. And uh, she realized that even there in the desert, just left for dead, basically, with no hope. There was hope as long as she, as God sees us. As long as he sees us, there is hope for us. Cry out to us, to him, then cling to him. The only thing we can cling to without losing a piece of our soul in this world is the hand of God. And we cling to everything else we can get grab onto. Yeah. And that's why people are broken. And that's why people are bitter. And that's why people feel hopeless and helpless. They're clinging to the wrong things. They're going to the wrong churches. They're going to places where God is not honored and his word is not foremost and precious and sacred. If you're going to churches where the, they are not teaching rabbinically what the Bible really says, find one that does. Again, I could spend all day talking with you, uh, but you keep using your gifts, your talents, what God has given you, the platforms. Keep it coming because, um, you know, there's a whole world that I think that needs to, to hear this message still. So thank you so much for everything you're doing. And I hope more and more people continue to watch this film, read your books. And uh, certainly I know there's going to be more in 2023 as well. Lord bless you. Shalom, shalom.